Howdy folks, Shell Presto here. Today I'm sharing a digital fan art piece in no small part because when you haven't organized your art supplies post move, working on the computer is just easier. Uh, especially when you haven't figured out how you're going to mount a camera to record your traditional work. But I'll get there. So digital today. I drew Sailor Mars from Sailor Moon, of course, uh, in Manga Studio or Clip Studio Paint. This was my second time working in color with this program, and it's interesting. Uh, this was my first time working with the watercolor brush, and I have to say that it was fun and very different from what I'm used to in Photoshop. We'll talk about that when we get to the coloring part, though. So, time for an awkward admission. Sailor Mars is my least favorite inner planet Sailor Scout, or soldier depending on when you grew up with the show. Uh, that's not to say I don't like her, she's okay, she's just not my favorite. So why did I draw her? Well, sometimes you're flipping through model poses looking for something to draw and you find something that looks great and you just instantly want to draw that pose. I bought a bunch of reference photos from Senchi Stock, who I highly recommend and who also has many free photos if you're a good old-fashioned broke artist. Anyway, the models usually wear plain white outfits. They aren't dressed as any particular characters, despite the senshi in the senshi stock title being from the Japanese word for scout or soldier in the aforementioned sailor soldier. So I saw this pose and wanted to draw it, and I decided I wanted to draw something I was really familiar with drawing. Sailor Moon fits into that category. And I thought the pose screamed Sailor Mars, so here we are. So, it's no secret that drawing from life for reference photos is a key part in getting better at drawing people. Even stylized anime or comic book people. And although you can totally just draw figures and keep them looking like the model, or just generic and featureless, it can also be fun to find an interesting pose and try to match it up with a character in your mind. And no one's going to care too much if you draw a faceless, nameless person, but if you draw a popular character, probably more people will care. That may sound a little harsh, but it's unfortunately true. Especially if you're not a top-tier Michelangelo, Van Gogh, Alex Ross level artist. If you're a mid-level artist like myself, and you want people to notice your art, you come up against the fan art conundrum. Which I'll probably eventually end up doing a video on. But that ain't the topic of today. So, to make the point quickly, if you draw a generic wizard decently, that's great but only a handful of people on the internet will care, if that. But if you draw Gandalf specifically, you have the potential for thousands of Hobbit and Lord of the Rings fans to take an interest in your drawing. I mean, surely some of you clicked on this video not because you knew who the heck Shell Presto was or wanted tips on Manga Studio. You clicked mainly because you like Sailor Mars and wanted to see a drawing of her. So, my ploy worked. And by the way, welcome Sailor Moon fans. Please check out some of my other non-Sailor videos after this one, because I draw a lot, sometimes a lot better than this drawing, just of characters you don't know yet. And well, we're all on our artistic journeys, so stick around and we'll all go on ours together. There and back again, and all that. Or are to stars and back again, or are to crystal and back again? It's too late and my metaphors are on the fritz, forgive me. Anyway, when you're up late and trying to figure out what to draw, falling back on characters you've drawn way too much when you were younger can be very relaxing, 
especially when you're trying to learn a new technique or program. Now, what did I learn? As far as digitally drawing in Manga Studio, two things. Firstly, I learned that it's way easier to erase during the line art phase cleanly if you put newer lines on a new layer and erase before merging down. What do I mean? Well, say I'm in the digital inking stage and I've drawn Sailor Mars's skirt and I'm about to do her legs. Now, when you're drawing digitally, it can be easier to get a smooth line if you start a line earlier and draw through where you want it to end. Sort of like driving off a bridge. So you're left with a big extra part of a line to erase. If you do this on the same layer that your other lines are on, you have to zoom in and carefully erase the tail on the new line while making sure you don't cut into the existing line and make the line look thin and uneven. But if the new line is on a different layer, you don't have to worry about touching the existing line. So if I already have her skirt drawn and I make a new layer for her legs, then I can more easily erase where the leg line overlaps onto her skirt without touching the lines of the skirt. Then I merge it all onto the inked line art layer um, and keep it one layer because it's generally easier to work with the line art on a single layer. And then I'd repeat that to draw her shoe at the bottom of her foot, and merge it onto one layer, etc. The other thing I learned was how to color using the smooth watercolor brush in Manga Studio or Clip Studio Paint. For the most part, I use the smooth watercolor brush setting on this piece. Uh, what really sets this apart from other programs is that the first stroke with this tool makes a very hard, defined line of color, almost a cell shaded look, and that subsequent strokes automatically soften that line and create gradated shading. In Photoshop, I'd have had to manually switch brushes to get that effect and switch between the two. And I thought it was pretty neat that Manga Studio folded that into one brush. It made coloring a lot quicker and even a little easier, although you give up some control when you want a harder shadow with less gradation. And it's a bit harder to get the gradations very precise. I could have switched brush settings, of course, but I was having fun just seeing what Manga Studio's smooth watercolor brush had to offer. And that's very important if you really want to explore and master a digital program. The same way that you'd go to an art supply store and buy, for example, a new set of a uh, new brand of markers and take them home and try them out, you should look at digital drawing programs the same way. Try to make a piece with just one digital brush and see what kind of marks you can make and learn how to use that one tool because unlike that trip to an art supply store where you're bringing home a new supply, opening it up and trying it, having a new digital program is like bringing an entire store home with you. And you wouldn't try eight brands of markers, 10 brands of paint, 20 different brushes, crayons, pastels, etc. in the very first piece that you do when you get home from the store. You've got to slow down and take it one step at a time. This is especially true for digital art because there are a million and two brushes available, especially in Photoshop, and they all generally offer a shortcut to a specific look or effect that you're going for. But limiting yourself and creating art the long way can develop skills you otherwise wouldn't develop. It takes more time right now, but it gives you techniques to fall back on the next time you have a problem that you might not otherwise know how to tackle. Like, the more weapons in your artistic arsenal, the better prepared you are for any battle on a canvas. So thinking about it, that is way more artistic information than I could have offered you back in 1997 which is when I first discovered and subsequently started drawing Sailor Moon. 
As a matter of fact, the internet wasn't on my radar yet, and I was equally concerned with getting made fun of by my fellow schoolmates for looking at books that I couldn't read. You see, I had found some Sailor Moon comics in Japanese at the not-so-local comic book shop and bought them so I could draw Sailor Moon when I wasn't at home. And then I started trying to teach myself Japanese so I could read the books because that's what you do when you're 13 and you're getting made fun of. The kids in class didn't care and still made fun of me, and I never did get good enough to, say, read an entire manga volume fluently. Uh, reading Japanese can be really hard. But I can watch a few shows without subtitles and know what's going on, because verbal Japanese can be a lot easier. Uh, and I can also read a Japanese fan comic here or there if I sit down with a dictionary. You kids who grew up with streaming and YouTube and now Crunchyroll never experienced this, but back in the day, anime took forever and a day to come over to the U.S., if ever. I remember the first time I saw Sailor Stars was a grainy VHS copy taped off Japanese TV that my friend purchased from some bootleg site in Canada. There were no subtitles. I remember I first learned the Japanese word for mirror, Kagami, uh, watching the Sailor Scouts fight in Hellenia. But even when I didn't know Japanese well, just looking at the screen was enough. I'll probably always think Naoko Takeuchi's artwork and the anime based off of it is beautiful. My regular style has moved on and is a bit closer to an American animation style now. But those big eyes and over-layered eyelashes will always have a place in my heart. Plus, what 12-year-old girl didn't want to have superpowers to take down evil with a sidekick magical talking cat? Thanks for joining me again, folks. Don't forget to click that like button if you enjoyed this video, and please subscribe to see more. I'd be happy to hear any drawing questions or even just to hear who your favorite Sailor Scout is in the comments. And most of all, I hope you have a good day. Oh hey! You stuck around till the end! Good for you! Since you're still here, let's take a look at some of my past Sailor Moon pieces, as well as a few other magical girls. So, this one is from high school, probably 2000-ish, uh, about 18 years ago. Uh, I was around 17 then, and uh, this one is a photocopy. I remember doing the original in study hall. I do have older Sailor Moon drawings than this that I could show you. If you want me to do a vintage sketchbook tour, be sure to tell me in the comments. This next one is from 2008 a couple years after I graduated college. It was done in ballpoint pen and Prismacolor markers. Uh, I drew it out of Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, Jupiter is a bit too buff in it, I think, but I was really happy with it overall. I especially liked the white highlights. To this day, I'm pretty bad at leaving areas white with markers, so this was pretty exceptional for me. Next is this Sailor Venus piece from 2012. I had just gotten into doing sketch cards. I think it turned out great, and I love the coloring job on this one, but her butt is kind of non-existent. I'm really proud of this one despite that, though. That same year, I was listening to the Ramones a lot, and I thought that since they had a song called Sheena is a Punk Rocker, that doing Mina is a Punk Rocker would be pretty grand. No one ever got the end joke, but it made me happy. This was also one of my first attempts at doing soft coloring with colored pencils. Now we're getting to my original designs. This one was for a deviant art group that wanted its members to create a new scout for the zodiac signs. I chose to do Libra, and it was a lot of fun. I wanted her scales to look similar to Neptune's mirror and Uranus's sword. I didn't give her irises or pupils because, well, justice is blind, and it seemed to go with the theme. Lastly, I've included my own magical girl from our Ascension Epoch books. Well, I guess my own reimagining, since she's from the Oz books by L. Frank Baum. 
This is my design of Ozma, Queen of Oz, as a modern day superhero. She lets me stretch my magical girl muscles, and I especially like incorporating Dorothy's silver slippers and Scarecrow's hat into her design. This one was drawn in Manga Studio, but colored in Photoshop, since I'm more used to that. Well, thanks again for sticking with me till the end of the video, and have a great day.